Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan special. Inshallah, we'll be going through all the different Ahkam to do with fasting by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always, Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Salaam alaikum, Sheikhna. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you? How's your fast going? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, it happens in certain parts of the world, especially in the summertime, where the days are extremely long. And unfortunately, certain uh, Muslims have to fast for an extreme amount of time. Here in England, summertime, we're looking at 18, 19 hours of fasting. I believe in towards the north of Europe, the Scandinavian area, you're looking at 20 hours, 21 hours, even 22 hours of daylight. Is there a compulsion upon fasting for that amount of time? Surely this is detrimental to people's health. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. With regard to fasting long hours and in the countries such as North Europe and such like, um, well initially let's give an introduction to this case. Um, so in the 90s, for example, um, many people migrated from the Middle East, uh, from the Muslim region, towards Europe and North Europe, and as well as North America. And um, in that time, the month of Ramadan was in winter, mainly. And gradually moved towards the summertime. So by the 2011, 12 onwards, uh, the month of Ramadan was in August and July and the mas'ala was asked by the maraja in overall that what should we do with this regard you know we are in let's say in Scandinavian region even in the UK that we are fasting over 19 hours in some cases over 21 hours so what is the solution to this case do we have to continue fasting such long hours or can we break our fast in somehow? The mas'ala was forwarded to the Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi hafadahullah and he made an extensive research and in-depth tahqiq uh, with this regard. The Sayyid came up with this solution for the pious believers, the fasting individuals, for fasting long hours uh, and in, in summertime, of course. Now, the first solution they say it says that you have two options with this regard. Number one is to fast the whole hours um, with respect to the local time. So, let's say if the Fajr time is three o'clock and the Maghrib and Isha time, Adhan is 10.30. Normally in England it's 9.30, 3 well, o'clock to 9.30, Exactly, 10 9 30, yeah. 10.30, 11.30 in Scandinavian yes. region. Um, such long hours. Number one, you have the option of remaining with that local time. So you fast before 3 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, which is the, which is the Fajr time. And you break a fast, as you mentioned, 9.30 in the UK. Maghrib mm and -hmm. Isha time, local time. But for, for example, in, in Denmark or Sweden, what time is Fajr and what time is Maghrib? It depends on the uh, timetable. Let's say around 2 o'clock is the Fajr time. Okay. And the Maghrib time is around 10.30 to 11. Wow. So, you so have that leaves what? Roughly uh, three, 20. three and a half hours? Yes. Left to they eat? have roughly two and a half, three hours left to uh, Open do the, the Ramal, break, break, the you fast, know, break the fast, you know, the be free Ahmad. in terms of... And then eat again for Sahur. This is, this, is, this is impossible. Exactly, exactly. This is not possible. This, exactly. is, this is very bad. Long hours of fasting, um, I'm sure that many of the uh, newly uh, balig yes. male and female won't be able to carry on such long hours. Mm -hmm. 
So the Sayyid gives the first solution that you remain on that hours okay. of uh, fasting, you s stop eating and drinking in the Fajr local time, and you break the fast in the Maghrib local time of Adan. The second solution the Sayyid gives that um, is to begin uh, refraining from, from eating and drinking from the Adan al Fajr local time, and then you go back to the normal times of the uh, Islamic cities, Muslim cities such as Karbala, Najaf, Mecca, Medina, Qom, Mashhad, and you pick up one of these timings in the Middle East uh, region, in the Muslim region, and then you add it to the Fajr time, from the Fajr time onwards of your own country. So let's say in the UK, we stop eating and drinking at 3 o'clock a.m. Uh, Fajr time. Okay. So you add from the Fajr time of the UK, which is 3 o'clock onwards, let's say 17 hours of uh, the fasting daylight in um, Karbala, for example. So that comes up to 8 o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. or Asr time, in our okay. time. So you can break your fast mm -hmm. by adding 17 hours, which is Karbala time, on top of the hours uh, of local time. So from okay. the Fajr time, locally, in the UK, 3 o'clock a.m., and then you add 17, 17 to it, hours, you'll okay. end up by what? 8 o'clock yes, okay. in the evening, which is the Asr time in our time, so, uh, in yeah, summer time. Yeah. So you can break your fast, 8 o'clock, um, Asr time, uh, or the afternoon time yes. in, uh, in the UK, for example. Um, you're allowed to choose any city, any Islamic city. For example, Mecca, Medina, it could be one hour shorter, for example. Okay, okay. So you can take advantage of the situation. Exactly, yes. And try and find the shortest city. Uh, exactly, you're allowed city to with do the that. Sh shortest amount of hours. So you could potentially be doing 16, 15 hour fasts. It depends on the city that you pick up, the, the timing and the, uh, the calendar time timetable of, of the uh, Imsakir so and, and break the fast. I mean, Sayyid Sadiq uh, was uh, probably, this fatwa of his was probably met with a lot of, um, you know, uh, confusion. Maybe some thought that he was, you know, disrespecting. So if we look at the Quranic ayah, ثُمَّ إِتُمُّ أَسْسِيَامِ إِلَى الْلَيْلِ Surely this is enough evidence to say that you have to fast until sunset. The Sayyid argues about what do you mean by the night? Okay. Layl. What is the, la the layl here? Yes. Is it the, the normal layl, the so, abnormal layl? So, okay, so what's normal and abnormal? I'm assuming normal is that you look outside and the sun has set, it's night time, there's no sunlight, therefore that's night. So what's considered abnormal? You see, Islam was brought in the Middle East, in that region, and the way of the Prophet and his pure family, that they fast, what they were fasting and breaking their fast into the, the normal hours in that region. So, which is roughly 17 hours in Mecca, Medina, in uh, Iraq, for example, in Iran, for example, roughly 17, up to 17 and a half hours maximum. That was the normal hours and default hours of fasting, the daylight for the month of Ramadan. Anything beyond that becomes abnormal, according to the Sayyid's opinion. Okay. So, let's say in one of the northern countries, Iceland, okay, yes. the fasting time is 23 hours and 25 minutes. They have only 35 minutes of night, night time, let's say. The, do they actually get night, or is it the case where the sun lowers and then starts to rise again? There seems to have the sunrise and, and sunset, but only okay. 35 minutes, and for it's example. A 35 minute gap. So, would, would the Sayyid argues, is that a night as well? Yani, is there somebody who is, who is able to fast 23 hours and 25 minutes? Almost impossible, unless somebody who's, who is uh, um, in a situation of uh, you know, not working, you know, sleeping all day, for example. Even that, that's I mean, yeah, possible. I mean, it depends. So You'll be on very minimum food. Exactly. So the Sayyid says, no, that's abnormal hours. Anything beyond 17 and a half hours 
is abnormal hours. So in this case, you're allowed to break your fast according to the hours of the normal hours of uh, an Islamic uh, city. Why did the Sayyid choose 17 or 17 and a half hours? Now this is the, the standard day. Um, what methodology did he use? Did he take an average of, of all the day uh, of the sunlight and then how long it's lasting uh, throughout the whole year and come up with an average? Or is it some other methodology of that a normal day is 17 hours or 17 and a half hours? As I've mentioned that this was in the times of M Alim Islam and the Prophet Sallallahu that they used to fast 17 to max 17 and a half hours. That was the normal hours. This is the way of uh, the Sharia went on that even after them, after them the ulama came and they used to fast in this normal hours. Anything beyond that they said is, is abnormal. And it, it is not muta'araf. You know, muta'araf means uh, is, is normal, it's mm -hmm. something uh, def by default. Yes. So by default, muta'araf that they used to fast 17, 17 and a half hours. And this uh, case of muta'araf or ghair muta'araf, mm -hmm. the normal and abnormal, it's been mentioned in the Rasala Amni of the Ulama as well, with regard to the wudu, for example. They say, that, for example, if the hands are larger than the normal, okay. then you have to make sure you uh, wash your face uh, with a normal way in which the others would used to wash. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wash, you know, up to the earth, yes. for example. Or if you have a small hand, then you have to, this is abnormal, then you have to make sure you wash all the mm -hmm. sides which requires to be washed. Yes. So this case has been discussed in the Rasala Amni of the Ulama okay. that the normal and abnormal, muta'araf wa muta'araf. So the Sayyid with his, mashallah, ilm and knowledge and deduction of the hukum from the source, he brought this mas'ala to also the fasting hours, okay. that this is not normal hours. Mm -hmm. 22 hours, 21 hours, 20 hours is abnormal hours of fasting. Yes. So in this case, you can go back and choose uh, one of the Islamic cities and break your fast according to the hours of that time. And that doesn't mean that you have to wait and watch the TV and whenever Karbala Adhan is gone, yes. goes on, then you, 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 you break. Fast. No, yes. you have to add the hours of the Karbala. So you're saying it's not at the same time as Karbala exactly. will open the hours. It's exactly. the same amount of time exactly. as what Karbala You add this doing. amount on top of your Fajr time, your local Fajr time in London, in, in Sweden, in, in Norway, mm -hmm. in Den Denmark, and then you break your fast afterwards, wherever it goes. So if, if it goes up to 6 o'clock in the afternoon, 7 o'clock, 8, it depends which city you choose and what hours. Are okay. in total. Ascent, Sheikh, ascent. Is it fair to mention that the Sayyid isn't the only one with this fatwa? Because obviously he, he, he received a lot of, uh, you could say, bad pu publicity for this fatwa because he was the only one with it. But now, mashallah, we have other ulama also who have agreed with this. It's not just Say Sadiq anymore. There is a number of ulama that actually accept this fatwa as well and have given their own reasons for a similar fatwa? Exactly, there are a couple of ulama as well, three or four of the ulama, they came after the Sayyid and they also issued this um, this uh, hukum as well, this um, case of um, of breaking your fast early during the daylight in the hours in which are abnormal and they've discussed the issue from different angles, mm -hmm. some of them scientifically and some of them in other methods. Um, this is how, alhamdulillah, we have in the uh, school of Ahlul Bayt the Shia, that we have the, the ishtihad where you yes. can uh, deduct the hukum yes. um, from its sources and with their own findings and extraction of the hukum. That's very important to understand that the faqih, the, the jurisprudent is an expert in this field, spent 40, 50 years. So when he issues such a important uh, mas'ala and, and he gives fatwa that's very yes, important indeed. from a alim, from a pious person Yes. because we have a hadith which says that the one who gives fatwa um, wrongfully and he knows about it then he will gain fire billah. his seat will be filled with fire wow. billah. so the marja is not a person who would fall himself into such a uh, position. A position where 
because he's a muttaqi, he's pious. So this fatwa, alhamdulillah, has been also argued and issued by the ulama as well. And some of them, as I mentioned, three or four of them, they came up with the same um, findings and conclusion that you can break your fast. Ascent, ascent. And Sheikhna, what about the fasts which are abnormally shorter than a normal day? As in, we're discussing where the night is very, very uh, short and abnormal. What's about the opposite way, where the day is very, very short and abnormal? Um, does any ruling apply to the time limit of fasting on those days? Exactly. The Sayyid also argues the issue of um, if, the win if the month of Ramadan was in winter, mm. and in some countries the daylight is only five hours, let's say. Let's say... 9 o'clock is the Fajr time and 2 o'clock is the Maghrib time, for example. Yes. So short, only 4 or 5 hours. Mm -hmm. The Sayyid says you cannot fast 5 hours only. That's not fasting. Mm -hmm. That's abnormal. Yes. I mean, uh, the normal fasting in the winter time, for example, in the Middle East, in the Muslim region, it's around, let's say, 7 or 8 hours. That's the normal. So you have to go back to the hours, the winter hours uh, of the fasting period in the Muslim countries, you bring that uh, seven, eight hours on top of the Fajr time okay. of your local time, and then you have to wait. So when the Maghrib time locally goes on, the Adhan time, you have to wait. You pray the Maghrib time and Isha, but you have to wait one mm -hmm. or two hours, less or more, to open your fast. To open your fast, um, even if it's dark, if, even if it's, um, there's no sun anymore in the sky, but you have to wait because you are fasting uh, abnormal hours, the daylight is abnormal. It's not seven or eight hours. It's only five, four hours sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yes, you have to make sure that you uh, wait after Adhan Maghrib, a couple of hours, and then you break your fast afterwards. So it's vice versa to the mas'ala of the summertime, where you can break uh, your fast when the sun is in the sky. And um, according to the hours of the a Muslim country. Shaykhna, is it mentioned the amount of hours which qualifies for a short day? So if it is this amount of hours, you have to extend your fast. Uh, and if it's not, then you can keep the fast. Is it actually, does it say it actually mentioned? You said 17 and a half hours for daylight. What about uh, the other way around? The Sayyid mentions that this ruling applies for the fasting period, which is less than six hours. Six hours of less than okay. six hours. Less yes. than six hours of day. Exactly. Right? So you have to make sure that um, it's not more than six hours. So um, now let me mention this message as well. If the timing exceeded six hours, let's say seven hours, then you have to fast normally. The Fajr, you um, stop, refrain from eating and drinking. And the Maghrib, you break your fast, khalas, locally. Likewise, for the summertime as well, if the hours are less than 17 and a half hours, then, of course, you have to go back and revert back to uh, the first option, which the Sayyid mentions, that you have to fast normally, normal hours. Anything less than 17 and a half hours of fasting time, of daylight, it goes back to normal. Because I mentioned that, that in the Middle East, it was 17, 17 and a half max of yes. normal hours of fasting, of daylight. Now if, let's say, the timing went less than 17 and a half or equal, then you have to uh, stop breaking your fast um, when the sun is in the sky. So you have to make sure you wait and you break your fast um, in the um, normal local Adhan Maghrib time of your country. So you're saying if the fast is 17 hours, 30 minutes, you have to fast the 17 hours, 30 minutes, exactly. the local time. Exactly. You are not allowed to shorten. Exactly. If it is 17 hours and 31 minutes, then you can refer to another city and maybe you'll be fasting 16 hours or 15 hours. Exactly. Anything beyond 17 and a half hours yes. and becomes abnormal time, even in, in a few minutes, as, as we mentioned, yes. you go back to uh, the normal hours of uh, an Islamic city and you begin to break a fast in the daylight. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for explaining that fatwa for us. And thank you to all the viewers 
who are joining us on this episode. Inshallah, you'll be having a nice, easy short fast. And inshallah, you have the yaqeen that this fatwa was fully approved by the ulama and that there is nothing wrong with shortening your fast if there is abnormal hours. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah Wa Barakatuh. Oh, 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 oh,